Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Ben Newman. I'm a coronavirus researcher. Uh, our first question today uh, is from Becky. Yeah, good morning, Becky. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's, it's cold outside where I am. I don't know about where you are. All right, um, just read an article that said that the Maryland School of Medicine claims their research shows a daily dose of aspirin may reduce, yeah, may reduce is the key there, the serious risks of COVID-19. What's your opinion? Fine, yeah. I had an opinion, and then I looked up the uh, paper, and it slightly modified the opinion, but yeah, it still survived pretty much intact. So the thought here is, uh, let's do that first. The idea here is not that aspirin is going to do anything directly to the coronavirus. I don't know of any pathways where these two directly touch. A better cell biologist might be able to say, oh yeah, you know, three steps removed from this thing the virus does. You know, that's where aspirin comes in. But I don't know that there is any such connection. So the idea behind this is um, the reason why people take daily um, uh, aspirin, low-dose aspirin. And that is to stave off blood clots. Now, the risk there is that um, it puts them at a slightly higher risk for, like, hemorrhages <laughs> internally. But you knock out your risk of blood clots. And so this is like a good physician uh, decision, you know, not a Dr. Ben uh, decision, um, where they would try to see, okay, based on the risks that this patient is facing, what should they be doing? Yeah, like that. It's a, it's a management technique as far as I can tell you. Health management. All right. Um, so what's the paper? Well, all right. The paper is a retrospective. And uh, if you want to go look it up, here's the title. Aspirin use is associated with decreased mechanical ventilation, ICU admission, in-hospital mortality, in hospitalized patients with COVID-19 by Jonathan H. Chow et al. And et many. Yeah, there's a lot of people on this. It's an anesthesia and analgesia journal. Yeah, it's a cool journal. Why not? <laughs> not my cup of tea, but uh, yeah, somebody's for sure. Um, yes. All right. So what does it show in here? Well, all right. I looked at it. First of all, it is a retrospective study. And uh, the authors mentioned this in the press release and in the uh, paper, which means that one day they decided to go back and look and say, hey, all, all the people that came through these hospitals, how many of them um, do we know for sure were on daily aspirin? And was there a difference in what happened, you know, months ago with or without daily aspirin? Yeah. This is okay, but this is not the best kind of study. The best kind of study is a placebo-controlled, proper, blinded clinical trial where you take patients coming in, make sure that everything's the same about them, give them the same treatment, or rather give them two different treatments, yeah, and get enough people in each of those groups, and uh, then you can say with real confidence whether something actually works when you try it now. Not whether that plus 50 other factors that didn't get written down on the charts at the time made some effect. Yeah, which is, I think, what we have here, unfortunately. Um, so looking through the data, it's uh, kind of a small sample size thing. They've got uh, something like over 400 in the one group that didn't uh, wasn't on aspirin every day. But they've only got about 100 in the group that was on aspirin every day. And remember, this is a disease that's going to kill maybe, I don't know, 2% of people. If you're talking hospitalized people, it's still only, uh, I think it's still less than 10% uh, uh, fatality rate. So even then, you're dealing with very small numbers. And the numbers of, th of people that they're interested in, like um, mechanical ventilation, for example, I, it's fewer than 10 people in the aspirin group that they're comparing to 20 some people or 30 some people in the other group which is a bigger group and it's a marginal difference uh the p-value is uh well whatever the p-value is kind of on the edge the p-value suggests that um with this strength of data you would get it wrong about one in 30 times and there are about 30 statistical comparisons done in this paper so yeah <laughs> i would be pleased but a little bit surprised if a larger uh, placebo-controlled, uh, randomized, controlled clinical trial uh, was able to reproduce these results later. But that's why you do the test, because you can't just predict these things. you got to figure them out with science, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it makes sense intellectually. But also looking through the uh, data, there are a couple things that stand out. So the aspirin use did not change uh, the rate of death at all, yeah, in the hospital. And yeah, that may be a red flag right there. 
Um, the uh, use of aspirin um, also didn't change most of the other clinical parameters. They had these great tables at the bottom where they tested lots of different things. And there are two or three values, and let me tell you, that stand out uh, where it looks like something good happened. But they're just like these three random ones, and they're all in the title of the paper. And all the other things like around them that you'd think would, would go with this miracle drug's increased powers, um, they did not show any good results. The other thing to point out is that the people who were on the, uh, in the taking aspirin group were in significantly better shape when they entered the hospital than the people who were in the non-aspirin group. Part of this may be that they're doing something every day to take care of their health. They may be, you know, conscious of this. And tr yeah, there, there could be a lot of reasons that don't necessarily involve the little tiny aspirin pill. They could, but I don't know. There's a lot more reasons out there, and I wouldn't jump to that one as the first reason. So I think it makes sense. I think it probably won't hurt. Based on the study, it certainly didn't hurt uh, um, anybody uh, taking the low-dose aspirin. But at the same time, I don't think we can actually get behind this yet and say that, yes, it definitely is going to work. This is going to protect people. Um, when and if that changes, when we get a nice big study that comes out and shows the opposite, I'll be happy to report that as well because that'll be nice. Yeah, it's always good to have something that actually definitely works um, against a virus like SARS-CoV-2. So there we go. Thanks very much. Very good question. I like questions where I get to read a new paper. Uh, and uh, thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.